Cal, down here at your gym, and uh, you've got a busy, busy few weeks ahead of you. Yeah, yeah, got a couple of, uh, well I've got busy three, four months mm. ahead of us, so I'm uh, quite excited about it. Well, well, we'll talk about the fights coming up, and we've got a few lads coming back and we'll chat about them as well, but obviously you've got Tommy Tatum fighting on the uh, 25th. 25th on the big one card in Manchester. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's going to be a pretty, it's not a final eliminate, but it is eliminated. Yeah. Getting him right in the mix for that light yeah. heavyweight crown that he... Yeah, I'm, so, I'm very excited, man, on that... Uh, and he's let us, you know, and Steve got us fighting on the bill, uh, especially with Eddie Earns. I like working with the Earns. Mm. Uh, match room, I like working with them, they're good people. Yeah. So I'm, I'm happy uh, to get back on, um, you know, back on the scene with them. I think, I think Toby's going to impress them. Well, he's, he's always impressed me, as I've said to you, you know, over the last couple of years. I mean, I know he's had injury after injury and, you know, he's come back fighting them, but he's always come back better. Well, it, you know, he, he's, he's he's the most improved fighter. He's yeah. he's, got, he's getting better and better. Yeah. He's, he's not just you know everybody thinks he's a raw fighter, but he's a, he's a, he can box as well. Power. And he's, well, we'll see on the see on the night. But you know, I, I'm not going to say that he's a he's a strong kid. But it's not all about you know. No, it's been able to be able to deliver it's it. Be able well, to deliver it. it. Yeah. It's all about boxing as well. And uh, Toby, we've got a plan for this fight. And uh, I'm hoping that it, you know, we can we get gets it together and it, and it works. Well, he could be the dark horse of that. Well, I think he's a yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah, yeah, definitely. And he looks the part as well. And he's such a nice lad, right. and he'd be good for TV, you know. So uh, I'm looking forward to that. And then you got Rick Godding. Rick Godding, yeah, we we've uh, you know I, I like Jimmy Kelly. I've got a lot of time for him and his dad. I mean, they're nice, nice. I just think it's just a clash of the times from the, from like from Manchester. Well, this was a fight that you wanted about a year ago, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. You know, we was Rick was just getting back into it, and we took that. Come where was it? Cochrane fight. Cock, Cochrane. Yeah, Cochrane. And uh, we took it too soon because he come back after his injury. Mm. Uh, we got we got beat on points, you know. But well, anyway. Cochrane's ranked number three, and yeah. Jimmy Kelly's ranked number four. Yeah, now, well, so. yeah. Well, Rick were, Rick were ranked number two at one point. Yeah, so know. it's he's at that level. Oh, without a doubt. Uh, and I just think, he, you know, he, this is like his last chance, I think, knowing that if he, if he gets beat by Jimmy, where does he go from here? And Jimmy thinks the same, though, as well. Really? So, yeah, he does. Surprised, because I think Jimmy could go still, you know, he's got a lot of... Well, Jimmy's career probably hadn't even started when um, Rick was number two in the country. No, no, I know. So, you know, know. It's, it's like, as far as he's concerned, he's fighting nobody, and not that he's treating Rick Godin, because he, he, he's seeking him serious, because he knows that if he doesn't get past this step, those world title shots that he wants and those big fights that he wants won't materialise. Yeah, and it's but, the same with Rick. Rick's yeah. still got the younger. People don't estimate, I think he's in his prime now. He's 30, 32. He's 32, wasn't he, last week? Yeah, he's in his prime. You know, and he's, he's had two, three years where he's, he's had uh, two years off with his, with his injuries, but he's not been, he's had time off. Mm -hmm. He's just not fought. And he's had a couple of three, four fights last year, but he's still, he's always been in the gym. Well, the, the fight with the Cochrane was, you know, you took it, you only had three weeks notice. He was preparing for a fight, but he was a four-rounder. Yeah, four-rounder. And uh, that's a little bit different than, than yeah. coming into think, fight, uh, I think a ten-rounder. I think at the time, you know, Rick were panicking, well, I might have left, you know, I'm, I'm, you know on the shelf like, and, and, and <clears throat> you know, what, you know, what you, what you, what you, what you, what you well, I, to me, I'd leave it, Rick, and just, let's, well, the fight will come. Will, no, I want to take the fight, I'll take the fight. And he'll tell you afterwards that he, he, you know, it was his decision, it was his own man. I, mm -hmm. I, I didn't want him to take the fight, but he took the fight. And, and, you know, take great confidence out of that fight, though, considering the, like I say, three weeks notice, but there was only like two weeks of training for that fight. And yeah. This was having to well, come yeah. down there. Well, yeah, we, we, we didn't realise how fit Corkin were going to be and how much pressure. And after three, four rounds, Rick just blew up. Mm -hmm. And after three, four rounds, I thought Rick was just ahead of the head. Yeah. You know, so, and just proves how tough he was because he, he grew them last three, four rounds out. You know, I, I was ready for, come on, I'm going to pull you out. No, you don't pull me out, you don't pull me out. <laughs> you know, I'm a soldier, you know. And, but it upset me because I know he, he can, I know what he can do. Well, and he's happy about this because I spoke yeah. to him before. Yeah. And, he, you know, he knows he's on point for this. And yeah. everything, as far as we're talking about up to this day, is going perfect for him. So yeah. he'll have no excuses one way or the other. No, well, it, like I said, it's a, it's a, a last stand scenario for him like you know he knows that he's got to he's got to impress and if he's impressed he's back up there 
Yeah, and it's still, and like I said, Rick, you're still, in this day and age, you've still got another three, four good years left in you. Yeah. You know, you're a good fighter, good boxer. I think it's, it's hard fights, that, that, not age, that yeah. kills a, yeah. a fight. It's hard fights. And, and Rick's, Rick's never been in. No, it's, it's, it's too classy. Mm -hmm. It's too classy. Mm -hmm. And he'd be, touch wood, he'd be classy on the night as well. You know, we've got him, you know, we'll, uh, we'll be, you know, got three, four weeks now to peak him and we'll get him there. You and know. then I was here when I first come in, you were working with Shane Singleton. Right, okay. Now Shane... He's got his uh, British title fight with Bradley Skeet, Skeet yeah. May the 6th, got a date. What's the betting on that? <laughs> I think he's 9-1 to one for... 9-1 uh, to one for Skeet. Yeah. Very, very good fighter. Quite, I, I, I like the way Skeet fights. Mm -hmm. But I understand how he fights. Yeah. So if I can work on, we can work on some... You know. And you have been. Yes. Yeah, so 10 weeks out. No, I don't and I'm seeing you. I know, don't, I know. Don't we're not talking about what, but you are working on points to, yeah. to what you feel that will win this fight. And we're 10 weeks out. He's almost on weight. Yeah. You know, this is, oh, he, 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 he will Shane, get a better opportunity than Shane, Shane wants it. Shane wants it more than ever, mm. and uh, and that's what I, I love about him. I don't need to, I don't need to like get him up for it because he's already there now. Mm -hmm. A bit disappointed. He had to go away for a couple of weeks when it was cancelled the last time. Mm -hmm. But you know, it, this is the biggest. This is his biggest fight. This is his world title, and he knows if it does come off, it, and he beats a great, great, and he beats a great fighter like Skeet. You know, he. Uh, Great opportunities for him. Mm -hmm. You know, he still hasn't got over the Eggington fight getting beat by him. He knew where he went wrong. You know, and touch wood, you know, we can we can turn that round on this fight. Oh. And then, now with those three big fights out of the way, you've also got Mike Stafford coming back. Well, Mike's on the verge of getting fired for a title, believe it or not. You mm -hmm. know, they just said if you a couple of fights under your belt, then there could be a, an opportunity to fight for the title. And he mm -hmm. wants it. You know, he's, he's, he, he, again, his hunger's come back. Yeah. After his injury, again he's been off with, off injuries. Because he had two operations on his feet, didn't he? he, he well, when, he had the arm. Right, when we fought, when we fought, John D Lewis Dickinson. Dickinson up in the uh, in the uh, in the North East, you know, and we were confronting that fight, by the way. Mm -hmm. And first again, first three four rounds, he were beating him, and then he's, he pulled his muscles and, and his, 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 his bicep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so he fought. He fought for eight rounds with one arm. I mean, and he could, and, and and he could have won it. Yeah. I think you only lost by about three points or yeah, two points yeah, on a couple yeah. of scorecards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so and not kept one handy fighter. Well, it was, but you know, kept saying, "Come, well, how do you feel? You want me to pull you out?" And he wouldn't give me that answer. So we'll carry on. We'll carry on. Mm -hmm. You know, and afterwards, he, you know, his arm was was like that. But if he's, he's a, you got it in with an, an hammer to knock know, him out. Yeah. I don't think you. I don't think you knock him out with an hammer, Mike Stafford. You so. if, if Desperate Dan was a real person, well, he's he's <laughs> that's that'd be him, wouldn't he? <laughs> And yeah. then you've got Adam Simpson uh, making a bit of a comeback. Yeah, he's fighting on the Scott Scott Fitzgerald's bill on March the 11th. March 11th next week. Uh, yeah, quite excited about him. He's, he's, he's a very talented lad. Mm -hmm. He's a young. He's you know he's he's very talented. He's got a good style about him, and he uh, you know he could go a long way if he get if he puts well, his mind to him, it. Well, um, on his debut, which was just over a year ago, it was, yeah. it was uh, just before it was on the Jolly Boys, not like yeah. this year, but last yeah, year. Yeah, that's right. And he fought a kick or hanging name name name. Yeah. I think it weren't was. a bad kid, him. It was a fight. Yeah. Was. But Adam Adam just outboxed him. Uh -huh. He did he did what he was told, you know. And uh, but the problem with Adam, he's been a bit injured. He's had to, you know, he's come he's in and out of the gym. And now he's on it. He's on it now. His head's on it. So he's uh -huh. uh, he's looking forward to next week. Yeah. So yeah. exciting times for. Into his gym. Yeah, we just need to get them champions. What we said about two, three years ago, you know, mm -hmm. what was my top. You know, I've had a few disappointments. There's people left us and come back, and you know, and but at the day you just carry on and just crack on, don't you? Yeah, well, we was just chatting with uh, Morris Cole. Morris Cole, yeah. Morris, I love this gym. It's great. It's like the old fashioned. You you train in the proper way, and it's and it's a compliment from Morris. Mm -hmm. I love well, like I say, I think this is a camp. This place here. Would suit champions. Well, that's well, 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 because it's it's isolated. You've no distractions yeah, or anything like that. That's right. And you've got everything. You know, those big bags that I see Tommy knocking around. You mm, know, mm. moving those. Are, those are, you get a workout on them, don't you? For your arms and everything. Well, it, you know, the idea was. You know, I always loved the idea when I was fighting, of doing a Rocky Marciano, being in the mountains, training the mountains. Mm -hmm. And lucky for me, I live in the countryside. And then when I sold my office and my gym in Bolton. Mm -hmm. Where am I going to go? And I looked at me boy and said, oh, convert it. I spoke to the lads, are happy coming down? They said, it's going to be like a proper training camp, this. And they said, yeah, and anybody who comes down to our gym loves this gym. Mm -hmm. And there's a good atmosphere in the gym as well when it's busy. Yeah, and you it's know. busy now. Yeah, but we're, we're getting there, aren't we? I see that with here before. Yeah, he's come to join us. Uh, he's, 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 weeks, still for fighter, he? he's weeks away. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. He needs to lose a bit of weight. There's a few stone away. Yeah, yeah, Make yeah. But, but he, want, he wants to. He wants to give it another go. He says. Yeah. So I'll, I'll give him a chance, like I do with everybody else. Yeah. Kurt Greaves, he's back in the gym. Yeah. You know, so uh, that, you know that's great to see. Right. Well, listen, yeah, it's been yeah. a pleasure. As I always, like to say good luck for the uh, oncoming fights, and like yeah. say, hopefully, at some point this year, well, you might have that, that British champion that you've been so desire. I, th I think there's a couple, you know, we could we could do it, you know, and, you know, it's could be a few. well, it'd be great, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. Especially from Preston as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it'd be great that. Yeah, you know, I've been in the game a long time. I've trained some good fighters over the years, and probably people don't realise who I've trained. You know, and I'm, I'm not, I don't go out boasting. You know, I, I don't, I don't do that. I just, I just get on with it, don't I? Yeah. And that's why I like the champs camp because they're like that as well. Just they, get on with it. They just get on with it. They're good people. Great to see. Enzi's yeah. been coming down with Ben Ben Sheed. We're massive improving that kid. Brian, Brian Rose has been coming down with Bo with, with Bobby. Bobby. And uh, you know, just great to see him coming down and making the effort and you know making a cup of tea and coffee and you know. Well, that's a. That's an intriguing fight though, isn't it? Um, Brian Rhodes and Jack Arnfield. Tough fight. Tough fight. I'm glad I'm not in the corner because it's a bit personal with them two, I think, mm. because they knew one another. You know, I like Jack and I like Brian. Yeah. And uh, I just, uh, I think it's going to be a tough fight. It is. Uh, again, you know, as we keep saying, 50-50 fight. Yeah. I think Brian's got the edge, but the way Jack's been fighting, he's, he's really stepped up the mark these last... Well, if you talk about momentum... Yeah, 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 yeah. He's, he's, a, he's on good form Jack's at the moment. Jack's got the edge because yeah. of, you know, he's got that yeah. flow going. That's right. And he's won fights that he's, perhaps no one really thought him to beat John Ryder, but he did. Mm. You know? And then oh, the way yeah, he beat the call, yeah, well, was a, a yeah, yeah. really confident performance. Yeah, yeah. Again, and with Brian, Brian knows him inside out. Yeah. So Brian knows what he's going to deliver. All right, he's, he's going with Michael. He's at Michael, Michael Jennings' gym. But Probably. do you know something? I think Jack as well. He's beginning to enjoy boxing again. I think well, he's got love with it a little bit. Yeah, I think I think with Mike, I think he's giving that because Mike understands all about the boxing. He's, mm -hmm. he's been in the game like I trained Michael for you know mm -hmm. a long time, so he understands how to deal with lads and talk to lads and him and him and Mike and you know it's, it's it, you know it's great. I can I can see you know they get on well together. Mm -hmm. And the uh, probably you know Jack's away from Brian now. He's not overshadowed with, with Brian. Well, that was it. He was always the, the, you know mm -hmm. it's Brian Rolls. But I, I never, but I never really thought of it that way because Brian, even uh, Rick Godin said about Brian. He says, "Look, you know, when I was an amateur, it was always Brian, always Brian. They're like, you know, the the blue eyed boy, like you mm -hmm. know. So we just laugh about it, you know, when they come and spar and that. We just laugh about it. But uh, you know, but that's that's the way well, again, it is. Again, this is where we're saying this makes it dangerous as well because mm. you know, as good a role that Jack's on, Brian knows that it's a fact that he must win." He has to win. Has to, has to, to Brian has to win. I like like what I love about Brian's attitude at the minute. He's taking money from my family, mm -hmm. so it's personal, yeah. and I love that. And probably well, he said he's, he's Jack's probably for, for eight weeks while he's training yeah, this camp. Yeah. You know, at least it's not. At least it's not like Tony Bell and David Day anyway. It's no, not as ruthless no, no, as that. Talking rubbish to one another. You know, it's not that it's if when kids watch 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 it and there's a lot of swearing. That you know, I, I'm not into all that swearing no. on the air. Especially on I, I, you know, I do like Tony Bell. Uh, oh yeah, you've got to give, you got to get. I tell you something, he's got balls, hasn't he? He's got balls, hasn't he? Yeah, I mean, it's a big step up. I mean, for me, you know, he's not really a cruiserweight, you know, uh, and he's stepping up to heavyweight. Listen, I used to train Enzo when I used to train Enzo McAnally, mm. and we used to spoil with heavyweights, and Enzo used to knock heavyweights out. Yeah. So I don't underestimate Tony Bell, you. No, 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 and I know David A is a banger, but like as he left it on the shelf, you know you just don't know. I was watching David A fight this Italian guy this morning, and he did eight rounds with a guy. He's only five foot nine, and mm -hmm. he, you know it was a tough fight for him. He got cut, tough fight for him. Well, you know if Tony can put it on him. He well, for me, I mean, I I just think I don't see it going past four rounds. But someone did to say if it did go past four rounds, yeah. then it could get really interesting yeah, yeah, yeah. because then it becomes more of a Tony Bellew fight. Well, you know, well, you know, well, you know, David Hay well, you know, well, Tony's got the grip. You know, he's got the grip. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he, and, and he, he, you know, he's but a he is vulnerable to a punch. Of course, he is, and he's admitted that as well, mm -hmm. hasn't he? He said that, and David Hay, he's basically said that as well. So but I don't think David Hay is vulnerable to a punch. I mean, the only punch that put him over was. Carl Thompson. Yeah, Morris's friend. Yeah, but listen, David is a very skillful fighter. Mm -hmm. He hit and don't be when he, you know, when he won the world title, he fought the Goliath. Yeah. You know, he just did the right, the tactics were right for that fight, mm -hmm. but he didn't get it right with the other fellow, did he? Blocking. No. 
He didn't no, get he didn't, no, did he? I mean, he didn't get a right for him. Considering he, he knew the injury that he was carrying when he went into the fight, I was always a little bit upset that there wasn't a plan B. If he couldn't launch his haymaker, yeah. well, surely they must have had a plan B there by, yeah. you know, they'd be using something else. But See, Tony bogey has got a boxing brain. He's, you know, he had a he's great pedigree as an amateur. Mm -hmm. You know, he's not he's not going to stand in front of... Uh, he fought as heavyweight as an amateur as yeah, well, didn't he? He's not going to stand in front of David A and say, go on, hit me with your haymaker. He's not, you know, he's, he's too cute for that. Mm -hmm. You know, if they get the tactics right, you just never know. Like, you just never know, do you? Well, that's why we all love boxing, isn't it? Because you, you know, never know. You just never know. You know, like I said, I, I you know, when I used to, when I used to train Enzo McAnally, you know, I, he used to knock out the, I couldn't believe he used to knock these lads out. Mm. Heavyweights. And these were good kids, I'm thinking, oh, okay, no. you know, where's, you know, bloody hell, you know, and Tony Bell, he's got that power. Mm. You know, he's got that power. But, I don't think, you know, I, I, I think David has just got the edge. Just got the edge, but don't, don't, do not underestimate a, a puncher. Well, I wouldn't put money on either of them, but yeah. I certainly wouldn't put Beamed, money on Tony. Be quite either. interesting. I've decided not to buy a ticket to go down because I think the fight would be over fairly really quick. Yeah. But that's my own personal opinion. Well, on the undercard, though, there's another good fight, or an intriguing fight again with uh, O'Hara Davis and uh, Derry Matthews. I mean, O'Hara, he's rubbing up everyone up the wrong I, way. I, I, yeah. <laughs> I watched uh, Mozza, is it Mozza? Uh, What's his name? He, 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 yeah. he put no, not him. One of the boxers, and he put it on first time. And oh, I, right. I was listening to the uh, the interview, like the you know the press conference, and, uh, and the, sh the stick they them lads got from Liverpool lads. I know. You can't rub a scalp can you? Fuck okay, <laughs> you. Know, you can't rub a scalp. But, but I mean, he comes in with the wrong, you know, with the headphones on, yeah, the big glasses on, you know, and he's saying that. You're paying my wages, you seven pound an hour guys are all paying my wages and you're like, oh, well, he's not saying the right things here. I mean, I think everyone wants to see him get, want to see Denny win. I think everyone's going to be behind you gotta, him. You've got to put him for Darren. He's, he's got, he, that guy, he just, he'll keep going and going. Mm. You know, he's... He's, he's, well, he's been over more times and I don't know what... He just but, needs, but again, one shot again, isn't it? Mm. You know, he... he uh, but maybe he's coming to his end of his t end of his career, and you know he's very lucky to have all these fights. What he's had, mm -hmm. title fights, and uh, but he's just how old is he now? 34, 35 or something. I don't know, but he's been in you know he's been in top fights for over ten I, years. I always thought take his toll I away, always thought Derry was under 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 weight, under weight. Yeah, I remember when he fought at Bolton and he got beat by that ch 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 Mr. Chang Chang uh, he lost his he lost his belt. He was a Frank Warren guy at the time. Uh -huh. Derry, and he just caught with a body shot. So that told me he was stripping his weight too you know, too tight. Well, I always thought he should have been featherweight, Yeah, you? I always thought he should have been heavier than that lightweight to mm. like light, even light well to it, you know. I but don't I, think it's more for this, but and let's put it this way, I don't think O'Hara Davis has the advantage because he's only just moved up to that light well away. So realistically, mm. there's not really much in it saying like, mm. you know, he's fighting the bigger man or anything. But again, a fighter's only got so many fights in him. Yeah. It's how hard the fight's going to be on the night. And I think now with Derry, I think it's, and no disrespect to the guy, because I really do like the guy. Yeah. He's a lovely fella. Uh, you know, it's how much he's, he's, he's got in him. Mm. You know, we're, we're talking about Rick before. Rick's still hungry. He's not had them many hard fights. No, no, no. You know, it's just luck with Rick. That's his problem. You know, he's only lost one fight in 25 fights. And he doesn't like that. Right? He, doesn't like, he yeah. still wants that. He wants, so that. He, he wants to win this fight and he wants to He wants Austin, Jimmy. Money. Jimmy, he wants you, mate. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, no disrespect. No, no, no. He said the same, though, didn't yeah, he? No, he's, he's, both have to be he's, one he's one spoke one. very highly of Rick, and I, I respect Jimmy for that. You know, like I said, he's a lovely guy. You know, his dad's a nice fellow as well. You know, a bit disappointed he left ends his gym, but that's personal reasons, and you know, but... So that's that's yeah. not a problem. You don't have one career, don't you? So yeah, you yeah, they think that. Right yeah, 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 yeah. He must have felt that was right for him at that time. Of course and, he does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, know, yeah. And, and this is what we're going to see. What what style what Lee style. Bader work with him and whether well, they're going to off or not. Well, Lee, Lee, you know, Lee's a very you know t t technical trainer, and, but I I work to that style as well. And so I, I know what I feel. I know what sort of style he's going to produce on the night, or what Lee's been teaching him, showing him to do. You know, I've just got to drum into Rick's head. You know, it's it's uh, it's going to be like a, a game of chess, this. Uh -huh. Yeah, and, it's going to be uh, intriguing. You know, Rick's, Rick's a very good counter puncher. So maybe it's a counter of a counter. I don't know. Don't know. Then again, Rick might take it to him. We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Carl. Take Thanks, care, mate. Thanks, Lee. See you soon. Cheers. Bye. Cheers.